Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I want to remind you that this week is loaded. On Thursday, we are going to have weakness night. What's it? Power night. Power in your life in Jesus' name. And then on Friday, I've been talking about it now because I'm excited. Sorry. Somebody help me shout. Sorry. Above. Tell me now. Above your limitation. It will happen. But you must be there. How many of you will be there? Our friends must be there. Our neighbors must be there. Let's put something in every life that they will thank you for the rest of their lives that they are soaring above their limitations it will happen in jesus name now tonight bible study it will strengthen you to give you backbone and you will stand in the grace of god unmovable in jesus name Let's have the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you, Lord, because every time we come, you reveal your mind, you reveal your word, you reveal your strength, you reveal your power to everyone. I were asking, Lord, tonight, you reveal yourself in the word we study tonight in Jesus' name. You will cleanse us more and more will go deeper in the grace of God, higher in the strength of the Lord, and will go farther in our knowledge of the word of God in Jesus' name. Make everyone as white as snow, and, and yet even whiter than snow. And the people of God said, Amen. We're coming to Mark chapter 7 actually today's study the verses we're looking at they are a continuation of the verses we looked at last week you understand last week we looked at the word of god on the tradition of the elders that the pharisees complained about that the disciples of Jesus Christ were not following every time they came from their market, they came from outside, and they came into their house. Before they eat, they will wash their hands ceremonially to the elbow. Unless they did that, they didn't think they should touch anything or eat anything. Not only that, they will wash their cups sanctimoniously ceremonially they'll wash even the tables that was their tradition but jesus christ came to save he came to cleanse the heart and he came to show the people that it is not the outward cleansing that matters but the inward cleansing of the heart and today, as we're looking at these words, the disciples came to him. They wanted clarification. They wanted more understanding. And they wanted more exposition of the word of God or what Jesus had said. That's the connection between today's study and last week's study. Look at verse 14. Mark chapter 7, verse 14. And when... He had called all the people unto him. He said unto them, Hakim, listen unto me, every one of you, and understand. There's no point just hearing and not understanding. There's no point coming to a Bible study and listening and hearing and fulfilling all righteousness in the sense that I was there. 
there must be an understanding. And so Christ said, I came unto me, listen unto me, and understand. There is nothing from without a man, talking about food now, that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable, concerning the illustration, concerning his declaration. And he says unto them, Are you so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever sin from without enters into the man, it cannot defile him, because it enters not into his heart. What he's saying is, the food does not enter the heart, it enters the body, the belly. There are things that you take in, that will enter into the heart. That one will affect you. It will affect the function of your heart. It will affect what comes out of your heart. There are some things to take in that you will even go to your brain and not go just into the belly. That one will affect you. But the one that goes into the belly, which is your food, it's just food. It's just a meal. And it enters into your belly. It says in verse 19, because it enters not into his heart, but into the belly, and goes out into the drought, purging all meat. What that says is, when you're taking your food, there is a part of it that nourishes your body. It mixes with your veins. It gives you strength and power. And the useless part that will not minister to your body, that one will go out and then you push that out, it's gone. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defiles the man from within, out of the heart of men. Proceed evil thoughts coming out, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Those are the verses we're looking at today and the topic we're dealing with is cleansing man's heart from all defilement. Cleansing man's heart from all defilement. The reason Jesus explained all this to the disciples and to us is so that we will know the way we ought to focus our Christianity and focus our Christian life and the way we need to focus having cleansing, having purging, having purification, having total freedom and the washing that is spiritual in our hearts. He doesn't want us to run after the things that do not profit and making laws and making rules and regulation that you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that. It says all the food were given, has been given by the Lord, and they are sanctified and they are set apart for us to benefit our body. So we are not going about telling people don't eat this and don't eat that. We are telling them that the word of God has made all things available for us to eat and they nourish our body. 
and they separate the nutrients from the things that do not nurture the body. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. There will be people in the latter times in which we're living that will depart from the face of the gospel and they will go back to the tradition of the elders. Look at this, it says they will be given here to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. There will be people that will be coming along just like the Pharisees. And they will be telling you and they will be commanding you and making um, prohibitions. You cannot eat this, you cannot eat that. Look at verse 4. For every creature of God is good. The old covenant is abolished. Clean animal, unclean animal, that's abolished. What you can eat, what you cannot eat, that's abolished. And the Pharisees were still committed to that. And they went beyond that. Not only even the things that are permitted to be eaten, but the way they washed their hands. The method of washing their hands. The religion of hand washing. But Jesus is saying, all that is gone. It is what comes out of your mouth, coming from your heart, that matters now. Look at that verse 4. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. If it be, it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. It is sanctified. It's presented unto you. It's profitable for you. It will nourish your body as you receive it from the Lord with prayers. But the disciples actually did not understand everything that Jesus said in this area. And so they came to ask him. It's good to ask questions, relevant questions, profitable questions, scriptural questions, enlightening questions that will make sure to have a better, a richer exposition of the Word of God. That's what brought these verses we're looking at, cleansing man's heart, from all defilement. Three things we're looking at. Number one, confirming his teaching to develop his transformed servants. The disciples are the servants of Christ. Voluntarily, they have followed him. Wholeheartedly, they have followed him. Willingly, they have followed him. With meekness, they have followed him. They wanted to know. They wanted to learn. They were meek and teachable. And these teachable servants were transformed. And now you have the confirmation of the teaching of Christ to develop his transformed servants. Point number two, clarifying the transgressions that defile trespassing souls. There are souls that trespass and they don't know. They think if they kept the tradition of the Jews, of the elders, they'll be all right. But now the Lord clarified the transgressions that defile trans trespassing souls. Point number two, clarifying the transgressions that defile trespassing souls. Point number three, cleansing for transformation. The receiving Christ cleanses us is for transformation, transfiguration, if you please, making us anew, cleansing us, purging us, purifying us, 
taking every form of impurity away from our lives, cleansing for transformation to declare true salvation. Those who have true salvation, they be to the Lord, and the blood of the Lamb has cleansed them, and they are saved, and heaven knows that they are saved, and they have this testimony to give. I am saved because I've been forgiven, I've been set free, I've been cleansed, and the life is transformed. Cleansing for transformation to declare true salvation. Point number one now, confirming is teaching to develop his transformed servants. Look at chapter 7 of Mark. Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 14. It says in verse 14, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Hearken unto me, listen to me, pay attention throw the traditions away and get the gospel truth I am presenting unto you. Look at verse 17. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples, his followers, the learners, the converts, the people who are now follow him like their master. When he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Then he verse 18, and he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? He had told all the people, Hearken unto me and understand. Do you mean you don't understand also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever sin from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile the man, it cannot disqualify him from fellowship with God, it cannot disqualify him from true worship, it cannot disqualify him from going to heaven because it entereth not into the heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meat. The point here is this. The disciples came to ask the Lord Jesus. And it shows they wanted to know. It shows they wanted to learn. And he was letting them know that they couldn't have two masters. Having Christ as master, having the Pharisees as master, they had to choose the one they were going to follow. And thank God they chose to follow Christ, the good teacher, the great teacher, the perfect teacher. The teacher come from heaven. It tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. It says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and serve and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot have God as the controller, the governor of your life, and then the Pharisees and what the Pharisees stood for as the controller of your life. You will choose Christ as your master, and then you will push all the Pharisees and religious people to the background. You're serving the Lord. You're forsaking everything. Your life has been changed. You are now a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, a learner from Christ, a transformed servant. 
And because of that, anything you want to know, you know from him. John chapter 8, we're reading from verse 30. John chapter 8, reading from verse 30. It tells us in verse 30, it says, As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word. You've been following tradition. You've been following the Pharisees. You've taken the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes as the authority of your life, as the final authority and author of your religion. But now, you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are cleansed, you are changed, you are transformed, your life is made anew. Now you must continue in my word. You will not go back to tradition. You will not go back to the ideologies of religious people. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The truth will make us free. Will not be under the yoke of the Pharisees again under the yoke of elders in religion again, under the yoke of traditionalists again, but the word of Christ that we're here, that cleanses us, that changes us, that makes us now to live by his grace because we're transformed children of God. We live by that word will remain clean in Jesus' name. Verse 32, he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verse 36, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. The Lord will make you perfectly whole, perfectly clean in Jesus' name. Now, let, let, let's look at this characteristic of the transformed servants, of the disciples of Christ. Something has been said. They had heard something from Christ or from the representatives of Christ. And they did not understand what did they do. They come to ask him. They come to be sure. They come to him so they will know know the truth look at Matthew chapter 13 verse 36 Matthew chapter 13 verse 36 then Jesus sent the multitude away and he went into the house look at this now and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tires of the field. If you hear something and you don't understand, it's as good as if you have not heard. You heard about the kingdom, you have not understood, it's like you have not heard. You heard about how to get to heaven, you don't understand, it's like you have not heard. You go to church and you have the scriptures read unto you. And you don't understand, it's like you have not heard. And they heard the words of Jesus. And these were learners. These were disciples. These were transformed servants. And these were people that had their mind. They wanted to get to heaven. Not just to hear, they wanted to understand. And so they came and they said, Declare unto us the parable of the tares and he answered and said unto them he that soweth the good seed is the son of man the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom but the tares are the children of the wicked one the tares are the children 
of the wicked one. They were learning something new. That it's not everybody that goes to the synagogue that are children of God. It's not everybody that goes through the open door of any church that is a child of God. There are the children of God and there are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear because they came, that's what they're teachable, and they asked the questions, and you could tell, they really wanted to know. There may be people that ask questions, but really, not that they want to know, they just want to talk, and they just want to say something. Those ones are not teachable. The teachable servants of Christ were the people that came and asked him, the question when they had heard him and he didn't understand what he had said. Mark chapter 10. We're reading from verse 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 10. And in the house, his disciples asked him again of the same matter. He had given them the word and he said that in the open in a general assembly, in a public congregation. And what he said, they really were not clear. And because they were teachable, transformed servants, and they wanted to understand, so they become better in the word of the Lord. It says in verse 10, and in the house, his disciples asked him again, of the same matter. What's the matter? Look at it from verse 1. And he arose from thence and comes into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resort to him again. And as he was wont, he touched them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command you? And he said, Moses permitted us, allowed us, suffered us to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation of God, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and a twain shall be one flesh. So then, they no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore? God has joined together. Let not man put away. That's the matter. That's the word. That's the teaching. That's the instruction he had given. That's why in verse 10, because the disciples were confused. They didn't fully understand. And any time they didn't understand anything, they will ask so that it will be clarified and confirmed unto them. Verse 10. And in the house, 
his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he says unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. And so you understand, the disciples came, they wanted to know. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 7. John chapter 3, verse 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus had that. You need to understand. And when you hear something about the new birth, you don't understand, it's like you never heard. You heard something about salvation, you don't understand, it's like you never heard. You heard something about reconciliation with God, and you don't understand, it's like you never heard. And so, in verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said, How can these things be? I don't understand. I need explanation. If we're going to be transformed, if we're going to be teachable, whatever we hear, we don't understand, we must ask. And the explanation that comes will lead us into understanding. In verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master in Israel, and knowest not these things? Are you a master in Israel, a teacher in Israel, a ruler in Israel, a leader in the synagogue, a member of the Sanhedrin? And you don't understand this? Look at verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus Christ went to the Old Testament and took his story of the lifted brazen serpent, and everyone that looked became completely whole. And he transferred that and transformed that and translated that into understanding of the spiritual matter. For Nicodemus to understand, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have, what will you have? Eternal life. It's ours in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 8. You hear something, the gospel, you don't understand, you should ask. It shouldn't just be in a hurry and say, okay, I've heard. But do you understand? If you don't understand, take time, ask questions, read it again, look at it again until you understand. And when you understand, pray about it, that it will get into your heart and it will transform your life, and it will make you have that salvation, that eternal life. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And I'm reading here from Bastachi. Acts chapter 8, Bastachi. And Philip ran thither unto him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? Do you understand what you have read? Do you understand what you have heard? Do you understand what you have learned? Understanding is very important. And then it goes from the head to the heart. Because you now understand. In verse 31, and he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? 
and he and, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this: it was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, I'm asking you now, enlighten me, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself, of some other man. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him, give me the name, Jesus. He showed him that is Jesus who came to die for the sins of the whole of humanity. It's Jesus who came to pay the price, who came to suffer. And his suffering is for the Jew and the Gentile. It's for the white and the black. It's for the Ethiopian and any other nationality. And he presented Jesus as Savior to him. And then as we were going, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Understanding had come. With the understanding, he had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as his only Savior. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Salvation had come, and the joy of salvation had come. It's the result of asking. I've heard, I've read, I've listened, I don't understand, enlighten me. Now we'll come back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, the disciples had asked, and from their question, the Lord will now clarify them and clarify what he has said about transgression that defiles the soul of the trespasser. We're coming to Mark chapter 7 from verse 20. And he said, That which cometh out of man defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, comes from within. The sinner thinks about it, plans about it, then goes into it. Fornication comes from within. And murders coming from within. It's the thought from within. The anger from within, the hatred from within, the plan and the plot from within that ultimately gets into that crime, that sin, sex, covetousness, wickedness, start from the heart. The seed, before it gets to the tongue, it's in the heart, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Then it goes on to say, lasciviousness, just going into excess, 
excess of every evil sin. It goes beyond even the normal sins of society. An evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. The Lord clarified it for them. But really, when you think about it, if the Pharisees had been reading their scriptures in the Old Testament, they would have known, they would have understood that those things that came from within defiled the people. Psalm 106. Psalm 106, I'm reading from verse 35. Psalm 106, verse 35. But they were mingled among the heathen and they learned their works. Jewish people, religious people, they mingled with the pagans, they mingled with the sinners, they mingled with the idol worshippers, and they learned their works, they learned their ways. Look at verse 39, the result of that. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went towering with their own inventions. They were defiled by the life they lived, by the things that came out of them. Verse 40, therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people. Is so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. It was co something coming from within that defiled them. Isaiah chapter 59. If they had read their own scriptures in the Old Testament and they had endeavored to understand, they would have known those evil things, sinful things that came from within actually defiled them. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 3, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your leaves have spoken lies, your tongues have muttered perverseness. Exactly what Christ was telling them. Read your scriptures. Read the word of God. And it will show you that these are the things that bring defilement unto a man, unto a woman. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Here the Lord was even speaking to a man who represented pictured pattern the life of Lucifer and it talks about what brought the defilement unto him it's all over the scriptures look at Ezekiel chapter 28 I'm reading from verse 12 son of man take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros and say unto him Thus says the Lord God, thus sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in heaven the guardian of God. It's not speaking to Lucifer through this man. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the burial, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Lucifer was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have said thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mount of God. 
that was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire that was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee in thee in thee is what is within then he goes on to say by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as profane as dirty as defiled out of the mountain of god and i will destroy thee o covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire look at this now thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty pride thou was corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before the kings that thou may that they may behold thee look at this thou as defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities the iniquity within that eventually became expressed without that's what brought the defilement and that's what jesus was saying it's not the food you eat it is not the water you drink and it is not anything that you put in the mouth that only goes into the belly that's not what defiles you it is what comes out of you and then he began to enumerate the things that defiled man romans chapter one in romans chapter one reading from verse 28 the things that defile the things that make man unqualified for heaven the things that show that the man is not yet saved not yet cleansed and he needs to come to the lord for the cleansing of this defilement romans chapter 1 verse 28 and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind is a mind they had a reprobate mind a disobedient mind a defiled mind a mind that was bent on doing evil and because of that god gave them up to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication you see in the word of god is unity and you find exactly what jesus said is what the apostle is saying by the spirit and it says they were filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate argument against the word of god deceit malignity whisperers backbiters haters of god despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death they are defiled they cannot live with god for all eternity they are worthy of death and it says and not only do the same but their pleasure in them that do them that's what brings the defilement that's what brings the damnation first corinthians chapter chapter six in first corinthians chapter six we're reading from verse nine first corinthians chapter six verse nine know ye not you must have understanding don't you know don't you understand that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators the same message that christ had given 
that fornication defiles a man adultery defiles a man idol worship defiles a man the same thing the spirit by paul the apostle is telling us here again neither fornicators nor idolaters idol worshipers nor adulterers nor the feminine nor abusers of themselves with mankind homosexuals nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god every man on earth needs cleansing needs washing needs purifying and it is the blood of the lamb of jesus christ that has shed for us that grants us that cleansing that's why it says in verse 11 and such were some of you but she are washed but she are sanctified but she are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god i pray the cleansing that christ has brought will be available for everyone not only available everyone will make a personal application appropriation of that which christ has done for every one of us in jesus name sin transgression iniquity bring defilement and those who remain in that defilement in that transgression in that trespass those who remain and they do not avail themselves of the cleansing in the blood of the lamb if they die in that condition they defiled and nothing defiling will get into heaven i pray you will get into heaven that's all the amen for getting to heaven look at galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 19 galatians chapter 5 verse 19 now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness have you noticed whether he's talking to the romans or talking to the corinthians or talking to the galatians the teaching is the same the explanation is the same and the scene the clarification of the word of god is the same that scene in all these nomenclatures all these areas they defile and if the defilement is there there must be cleansing and freedom before we can get to heaven that's why now to the galatians and to everyone who says now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envies murders drunkenness revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have also told you in the past that they which commit such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god no new doctrine just the doctrine of christ we're coming to jude just one chapter jude chapter one and here we're reading from verse eight jude chapter one verse eight likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion 
and speak evil of dignities. Then you come to verse 13. In verse 13, he now begins to explain the details of their lives who defile the flesh, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for how long? Forever. And Enoch also, the servants from Adam, prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him look at verse 16 these are murmurers these are the things that defile the complaints the murmuring the grumbling the evil speaking and the fault finding and the bad, bad things that come from the heart through the mouth. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Those are the defiled people. I pray every defilement or be cleansed away from every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Defilement will not remain in your life, will not remain in your heart. The Lord, as we believe Him, as we understand what He's telling us, and we go to Calvary and we allow the blood of the Lamb to cleanse us and to wash us and to purge us, every defilement it will take away in Jesus' name. What if the defilement is not taken away? What if somebody is coming to the church, to the Bible study, and singing the song, and reading the Bible, and studying the Bible, and claiming to be a member of the church of the living God? But the things that defile, they remain in the heart and the soul is not cleansed. It goes on trespassing. What will happen? Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the allmongers adulterers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death i will not be there i say you will not be there that means you must be cleansed you must be washed you must be purged and once cleansed, we don't go back into them. Verse 27 of that same chapter 21. There shall in no wise enter into it, into heaven. Any sin, any one that defiles, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are rich in in the Lamb's book of life. The question is, is your name written there? In the Lamb's book of life. Is your name there? Have you been cleansed? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you have real salvation? The salvation that produces righteousness. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. 
Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments. You'll be among the blessed in Jesus' name. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and be entering through the gates into the city, the heavenly city. For without outside are dogs, outside are sorcerers, outside are homongers, outside are murderers, outside are idolaters, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches, all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bright say come and let him that hear us say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely it's available freely the cleansing available and everyone tonight you have the opportunity there will be cleansing in Jesus name point number three now cleansing for transformation to declare true salvation cleansing the cleansing is available but you must take the cleansing the cleansing is ready for everyone but you must pray and everyone must call upon the Lord so that any form of defilement any form of iniquity any form of transgression that will hinder you from getting to heaven everything will be permanently cleansed away from your life in Jesus name look at Psalm 51 reading from verse 2 Psalm 51 verse 2 wash me thoroughly from my iniquity cleanse me from my sin that's prayer, sincere prayer, heart rendering prayer, something coming out of the heart. Oh Lord, I mean this, I want this, I desire this. Wash me and wash me thoroughly. Wash me from all my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. Verse 7 praying, touch me with Esau. And I shall be clean and wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. The prayer continues, make me to hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Here is the prayer, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. O Lord, this is my prayer, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me verse 12 restore to me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit only then after that after that cleansing do i have the right do i have the courage and do i have the assignment to teach other people verse 13 then will i teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Look at Psalm 19. I'm reading from verse 12. Psalm 19. Reading from verse 12. It's a prayer for cleansing. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Cleanse thou me from secret falls. Verse 13, keep back thy servant after the cleansing, after he has saved us. We need his upholding power that will make us to remain clean, 
remain righteous. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. And then, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, after you are saved, after you are cleansed, after you are purged, how do you remain clean? How do you remain in that righteousness of the Lord? Psalm 119 verse 9. Wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Hearing your word, taking heed. Understanding the word, taking heed personalizing the word and taking heed, believing the word and taking heed, and making the word to cleanse you, to punch you, and to show light in your first way. Taking heed, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments, thy word, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. The word of God will remain in my heart. I said the word of God will remain in my heart. Preaching it is not enough. Somebody can preach and not hide the word in his heart. And when challenges come, he has forgotten the word he preached. But when the word is kept in our hearts, as learners, as preachers, as members, as ministers, that word will take effect and the word will make us live a clean, righteous, upright, open transparent lives in isaiah chapter one isaiah chapter one verse 18 come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool that's what the Lord will do. He will cleanse us. He will purge us. Our lives will become new and renewed in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 33, reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 33, and we're reading from verse 8. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity. The Pharisees did not take heed to the word of God. They add all these Old Testament scriptures and the promise of God that they will cleanse, that they will pardon, that they will set us free. They add all the words, but they went into their own tradition cleansing their hand, washing their hands, the tradition that had no value, you will not be like them. I say you will not be like them. Look at that verse 8, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. 
And I'm reading from verse 25, cleansing for transformation, to declare, so you can declare, in order to declare the true salvation. Ezekiel 36, verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. Here is the Almighty God saying, It's my work, the work of grace, that I will do and I promise to do to everyone for everyone. Everyone that will come, everyone that will ask, everyone that will confess and forsake and seek my face. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean, and from all your filthiness, how much of the filthiness? I said, how much of the filthiness? From all your filthiness, and from all your idols, look at this, will I cleanse you. That's the promise. Although the Pharisees were taking tradition, and they were taking that into their hands, and they were not going to God in prayer, and so they remained in their sins. But now, as we leave all tradition behind, and we leave all religious rigidity behind, and we come to the Lord, He will cleanse every heart in Jesus' name. Verse 26, A new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take the stony heart out of your flesh, I will give you a heart of flesh. Did somebody say amen? amen. Verse 36, the last line of verse 36, I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it. He will do it. It will make you as clean as you want to be. In your heart, in your thoughts, in your mind, in your spirit, in your life, in your action. It will make you as clean as you ought to be in Jesus' name. But look at verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. They must ask. They must demand. They must require it of God. They must pray. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them and do it unto them. Second Corinthians chapter 7 second corinthians chapter 7 is giving us a promise and we're holding on to the promise and we're believing the promise and we're praying on the basis of the promise second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved the promise that he will cleanse us the promise that he will wash us. The promise that all our righteousness, all filthiness will be totally taken away. Having all these promises dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Let's be willing and let's come to God. And let's say, God, what you said you are going to do, what you promise you are going to do, here I am. Cleanse me from all the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Your time has come. It will purge, it will purify, it will cleanse, and no iniquity will remain in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, 
even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it you couldn't do it by yourself that's why Christ came that's why Christ suffered that's why Christ shed his blood on the cross of Calvary that's why he manifested his love for the church Christ loved the church and he gave himself for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse the church of the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish you'll be holy and without blemish titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 we're reading from verse 11 titus chapter 2 verse 11 for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us that denying ungodliness forsaking ungodliness fleeing ungodliness and totally departing from ungodliness and worldly lost we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ look at this that jesus christ gave himself for us christ gave himself for us as savior as a substitute as the sin bearer he gave himself for us as sanctifier he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity how many iniquity does he want to redeem you from tell me shout it you believe it he will do it who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he will not fail he will not fail you i said he will not fail you hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 22 hebrews chapter 10 verse 22 let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful our savior is faithful our sanctifier is faithful our substitute is faithful the one who has promised is going to cleanse us is faithful his faithfulness will be manifested in every light tonight in jesus name hold fast then the confession of your faith the proclamation of your faith and the profession of your faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised we're looking at revelation chapter 7 after cleansing and what he mean in that cleansing after washing what he mean in that washing after taking away the power, canceling the power of sin away from our lives, and we remain righteous in the Lord, when we leave this world, we'll go to the great beyond. 
and will be among the saints, will be among the people who are washed, who are cleansed, who are clean, who are righteous, who are holy, who are pure. Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders. These are elders in heaven, not Pharisees. And the four living creatures, living, the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are rich in white robes? Whence came they? And I answered and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, trial, temptation, trouble, and made them, tell me, made them, say it aloud, white in the blood of the Lamb. He cleanses the heart. He washes the heart. He cleanses the spirit. He makes us clean. He'll make you every which clean, every which whole in Jesus' name. Therefore, are they before the throne of God. And they serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. I will be there. Neither thirst any more, I will be there. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Won't you be there? For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and, they, and he shall lead them unto the living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. If he has washed away your sin, then he will wipe away all tears from your eyes. When the saints go marching in, you'll be among them. I'll be among them. We must allow him to wash us and cleanse us from every iniquity, from every sin, from every defilement, because it's only on that condition we'll be able to get into heaven. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. I read from verse 6, and I heard a seat was the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of the mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. You'll be ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in, in arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Arrayed in fine linen, clothed in fine linen, covered in fine linen, has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. For the fine linen 
is the righteousness of the saints. It will make you righteous. And it says unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true saints of God. Verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, white and clean, white and clean. He's looking at every heart. He knows every heart. And he wants every heart to be washed and to be cleansed. All the things that defile man coming out of the heart of man. He wants us to present everything to the Lord and be very sure. Don't just say, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I'm a member of the church, I'm this and that. Don't talk like that now. Come to the Lord and make sure that there is no shadow of doubt in your heart that the blood that cleanses and washes and makes white and snow is applied to your heart. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will receive a positive, favorable answer in Jesus' name. He will cleanse us. He will wash us. He will purge us. He will purify us. He will take every impurity away from every one of our lives in Jesus' name. He says, I have spoken it and I will do it. Yet, my people must make a request of me and pray to me so I will do it for them. He will do it for you. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Be a teachable member, transformed member, and whatever we don't understand, we ask the Lord, and he confirms his teaching to develop us transformed servants. Understand the clarification of the transgressions that defile trespassing souls, and now come to the throne of grace and ask him for grace and ask him for the fulfillment of his promise. I will cleanse them from all defilement. Open your mouth and pray and let him do it.